With Logic Pro 11, we finally got a built-in saturation plugin, Chroma Glow, and it's awesome. It's really like 10 saturation plugins in one with a bunch of additional features, and it sounds really, really great. You already heard in the intro, but this thing can really, really help bring out some fullness, some sheen to your mixes that you just can't get without saturation. So in today's video, we're gonna go through five Chroma Glow tricks that every producer should know. But before we do, it's really important that you know that Chroma Glow is only going to sound as good as what you put into it. If you have a bad sounding mix, then Chroma Glow isn't really gonna be able to help that. So I wanna give you something to help with that first. It's completely free. It's my six step checklist to a pro mix. There's a link down in the description below that just goes through the six steps that all professional mixes have and how to do them specifically inside Logic. It's free, it's really gonna help you out, so be sure to grab it, but let's go and jump into Logic. So the reason that I say it's kind of like 10 saturation plugins in one is because of these five different models over here, and then each model having two different styles, and all of them sound really different. So we have it on just some drums here, and trick number one is to use a little bit of tube saturation on your drums. This will help add a little bit of impact and a little bit of extra high end to them, and it contains the dynamic a little bit, bringing up the average level so your drums can feel louder, sound louder, have a little bit more impact, but you're not actually turning them up in the mix. So listen as I just dial up this drive on the drums. We're just on the modern tube preset here. Saturated a little bit here. So the characters start to come in. And then if we switch the style over to colorful, We'll get even more of that grit out of it. So with this, you want to be careful because you can just squash your transients. You can make your drums feel really flat and you can overdrive them in a way that might not be fitting for the context of your music. But so let's just drive it up until it starts to sound like a little too much and then we'll just scale it back a little bit. Cool. Okay, and then if I turn this off, a little bit flatter, a little less energy, add it back on. A little fuller, flatter, fuller. Let's listen to it in the context of the mix here. So starting with it off and then I'll engage just it. To get out, yes, just to get out. A little flatter. So a little tube saturation on your drums, it can work wonders. It's a really simple thing. And really quickly, before we move on to the second trick, let me just say that all of these tricks are fairly subtle, but when they add together, you get the impacts that you heard in the intro for this video. So stick around for all of them because they really, really add up. Okay, so tube saturation on your drums. The second is a parallel snare top end. So we're gonna go to our snare top here. What I wanna do here is just really exaggerate the high end, and then I'm gonna use this mix to blend it in. So what's really cool with this plugin is I can bypass below, meaning that I'm only going to be adding saturation to everything from that point and above. So basically doing a high pass filter in terms of the saturation on everything below. So I could drive just the high end of the snare drum, uh, upper mids and all that. Check this out. So just driving it really hard, we start to get a little bit more pop out of that fizz out of that snare. And then I can use this bypass below to bring it way up high so that we're really just exaggerating the, the crack of the snare, right? And you can find where this feels the best to you. And then I can use this mix over here to bring it all the way back to just the plain snare and blend up this parallel top end. It will always end up being less than you typically think or you initially think, but listen to the context of the mix here. So bring it all the way out. Off. Back on. That's pretty cool, right? And then we could flip through some of these models and find what sounds the best. So let's do that just in the context of the drums and I'm gonna exaggerate it just a little bit. There's a retro tube. Back to the modern tube. A little bit more top end on that. The tape. I like that, it's a little more subtle. This is the compression one. That's a little bit more obvious. So this is the context of the mix. You definitely have to bring that mix down, but that's kind of neat. And just, I'm not liking that analog preamp. Okay, so I think the modern tube is my favorite. And let's bring it back to where we had it, which was somewhere around 15. Cool. 
So just taking those two plugins away, those two tricks, and tube on the drums, and then this parallel top in on the snare, just taking those two away, it sounds like this. Adding them back in. And again, we might bring that snare top in down in the mix, but you get the idea. Okay, third trick is as an exciter on your guitars. So I have these guitars here. And we're gonna do something very similar here. So here we're just using an exciter, which is basically just saturation set at a specific frequency range. And we're going to drive the upper mid range specifically. So we're gonna do the same thing where we're driving it really hard. Maybe not all the way like we did on the, the uh, snare drum. And I'm gonna bypass so that I'm really just hearing this saturation on the upper frequencies. And what I'm listening for as I'm driving it is just below where we're getting that distortion sound, that kind of papery sound that you get when it starts to flip like that. There's nothing wrong with that. Sometimes that's the right thing, but I'm listening for in this mix for it to be just below that. If I turn this off, the guitars feel much duller, right? Add it back on. We're bringing out that excitement, that upper mid-range and, and bright energy from these guitars. And then again, we can just mix that back in. So in the context of the mix here, just to get out, yeah, just all the way out. on and solo and then again I just go through and find the tone that I like the best and I do this in the context of the mix I actually like that squeeze a little bit duller I like modern tube I think I like this the best but I want to dial the mix down as well Right? How much more presence are we getting out of those guitars now? Okay, and then fourth, we're doing something, again, very similar on our bass. We're using Chroma Glow to basically add a parallel grit track to our bass. So the presence of the bass sits a lot higher than the actual foundation of the bass, the fundamentals of the bass. They're sitting down in the low range, but where you're really going to perceive it is going to be up in the upper mid range around 4K. You can often bring that out with EQ, but sometimes it's nice to have a parallel track that's overdriven where you're adding more distortion, which is what sat saturation is and you're blending it up in so we're gonna do the same exact thing here but on bass now so if we listen to our bass drive it really hard but we're gonna use this bypass below so that the low end stays intact it's not getting distorted at all and then we're gonna bring this up a little bit higher usually I go anywhere 200 and above like in this case, I wanted to saturate starting around 200, 250. And then I'm going to bring this drive back until it's a more pleasing sound in my ears. It's okay if it sounds a little bit nasty. When I turn this off, notice the pick noise basically disappears. Add it back on, we get a lot more of that pick noise sound. Go through some of these presets, find the one we like the best again. Yeah, that modern tube is still the one doing it for me on here. So we're just going to mix this up in. That's pretty good to me. Off. On. Cool. Okay, and then let's listen to it on all these tracks off and on. A little bit flatter, a little bit darker. A little bit more energy, a little bit brighter. Yeah, I'm digging it. Okay, and then our final trick is as a little bit of tape saturation on your master track, your stereo output, your two bus, your mix bus, whatever you want to call it, your output track that all of your tracks are running through. We're going to do just a little bit of tape saturation there, and it's going to glue the mix together and add a little bit more warmth and fullness to the mix. So we're going to go and add Chroma Glow here, and... We're just going to go down to magnetic. That's the tape emulation here. And you want to be really, really subtle with this. This is your entire track running into this one place. So you, if you drive it too hard, just 
It's gonna sound awful. So we're just gonna bring it up until we're just barely noticing it and we're gonna scale it back just a little bit. And you really wanna play around with this, bypassing the plugin, making sure that you're really liking what it's doing. So let's go and do it. It's already a little bit too much for me there. Right around 10 seems to be the sweet spot. Yeah. So notice how it's almost like there's a lift in the upper mid range. There's a little more presence that comes through, but then there's also more warmth and fullness in the low end. Check it out. Just to get out. Yes, just to get out. A little bit flatter. Okay, now let's go ahead and bypass all of these and listen to the transformation with just a little bit of saturation, adding a little bit more fullness, adding a little bit more presence and brightness on different elements in the mix. Now you can see how quickly you could go overboard with this stuff. So this is why you have to be really, really careful. And I just have to stress, I know I said it at the beginning, but as great as Chroma Glow sounds, if you don't have a good mix that's feeding into it, it's not gonna be able to make your mix sound better. But if you've shaped your mix to sound good and clear and clean and professional, then what you are adding with Chroma Glow is going to put it over the top. So in my six step checklist, I go through the six steps that are the fundamentals of mixing. They don't include saturation, they don't include Chroma Glow, but they are the six steps that all professional mixes have and it goes through exactly how to do them specifically inside Logic. So if you don't already have it, be sure to pick it up for free. It's really gonna help you out. And I'd love to hear from you which of these five tricks is the coolest for you and do you think you're going to use in the future. If this video is helpful, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll see you next week with another video.